Hello coloring friends and welcome back to my channel. This is a video for you who are quite new to coloring and it's going to be about felt tip pens and fine liners like these. These, uh, these have a, actually a brush tip but they work in the same way like felt tip pens and the fine liners. So I used felt tip pens a lot when I started to color some years ago. First I tried some cheap brand of colored pencils. I thought it was hard and it didn't give the bright vivid colors I liked. Uh, so this is an art for mindfulness book and my favorite page I think with felt tip pens uh, But before that I had one of these cheap magazine coloring books and okay, okay, this is some mix of things, but and this was my first try with uh, colored pencils and here is fine liners but here <laughs> here we have felt tip pens and here combined with some gel pens and here so basically I mostly just did one area with one color so it's perfect for uh, it's perfect for patterns yeah, you can see here, vivid colors. Uh, but they, the, there is some really good things but with markers and with these kind of felt tip pens. And there are some things that are uh, less good. And I thought I'm going to talk you through that. And I'm no pro. So this is from my perspective, my, my experience with felt tip pens. Maybe you have a different... Um, experience with them. So my first set of uh, felt tip pens was, was uh, Stettler Triples Color with one millimeter broad tip. Uh, that was the one I mostly used in this one. I thought it was very vivid and easy to use and the colors and it glides through over the paper very effortlessly. I also bought the Triplus fine liners which is the same but a, a lot a lot uh, a lot tinier tip. Uh, I think it's 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 uh, so that is good for the real small spaces. Uh, but after some, uh, but after some time, at least when I bought them some years ago, they didn't have so many colors. Uh, so I started to collect some missing shades with a similar pen, the Stabilo pen 68 uh, which is very similar uh, I thought I like the triplets better but I know people who like this as well and I think they are quite similar in they both have I think it's the one millimeter this too the tip uh, but they have some at least then they had some other shades so I went to the store with my my swatch book and searched for single ones of Stabilo that I didn't have at this, with the Stettlers. But after some time uh, I started to feel that I wanted some more calm, more um, soft colors because they have just a very, they, all the colors are very vivid. And bright. 
so then I started to collect some of the Faber-Castell Faber Pit Artist Pen, which is a, a much more expensive pen, and it it has a brush tip, uh, and it's Archie's grade. Uh, which I actually didn't need, but I started to collect more soft colors. I can't remember now exactly which I started to buy because now I have so many more. I don't have them all, but I have quite a lot as you can see. So maybe I started to, I think I started with this one. Yeah, and the light, the ivory, very light yellow and light indigo. Yeah, I think it was them. So very light shades, which I thought lacked in the other sets. Uh, so, yeah, now I had some more soft, not so bright colors as well. And these uh, artist pens have some kind of ink in it. So they don't exactly like the other ones that are water-based but they are very similar when you use them on the paper in the coloring books. So the thing I like about these pens is that they cover very good. You don't have to have any pressure with your hand. So it's very effortless and fun to use them, I think, in the books. And you get the vivid colors immediately without building up layers uh, or using pressure that you might have to do with uh, colored pencils. They are also quite cheap. Uh, I know this is a, not a cheap pencil pen, pen but uh, I would say that these felt tips pens are cheaper than uh, some of the colored pencils. Uh, and they are cheaper ones, of course, that also will work, that you maybe can find in the children's store and so on. Uh, they may be not as good, but they will work. And mostly they don't bleed through in the books. Here you can see, this is very not very good paper. You can see a bit of the color, uh, but mostly they don't bleed through in the books. Here I tried some in uh, my test book of inky ivy, ivy inky uh, and there is no bleed through and as, as i said they are great for small areas except especially the fine liners of course but uh, they mostly have vivid colors some of the sets, like this uh, pit pen, have some more uh, soft colors, but felt tips pens mostly comes in very bright colors, which is fun and good, but sometimes you can feel that you would like some more calm colors to mix it with. And they can bleed through. You always have to test in your books. Uh, maybe you can find in Johanna Bessor's books, some of them, they have these pages at the end where you can try out colors uh, otherwise maybe you can take the last page uh, or the first page or a page you don't like and just try if it bleeds through they are also hard to blend and make beautiful gradients with that is one reason why a lot of coloristas prefer colored pencils uh, because I'm going to try to do it. If you have two colors, a light and a darker, and we try it here. If I do some dark and try to blend it out, it doesn't work very well, as you can see. There is a harsh line between the colors. And I know that some people can blend. I have seen beautiful results with, I think it was Stabilo, but it would work with the Statlers or uh, other pens as well, uh, on some paper. 
So some paper actually can do this a bit better, but uh, you have to try first and uh, they are not known for great blending. And uh, of course they run out, runs out earlier than colored pencils, uh, especially if you use them a lot. And as I said, they are great for small areas. They are not very good on bigger areas, as I think you could see on this page. The fox, the green fox, it's very streaky and patchy. It's hard not getting these kind of lines with either of these felt tip pens or the pit pen. So they are not good for big spaces. But they are quite fun to use. So I thought I was going to show you some ways I have used mine. Some tips and tricks. Uh, what I notice is that if you want a smooth color transition, the best way is to do almost like when you use colored pencils, small circular motions and uh, going back into the space you have color so you would blend it together like this. I thought that worked well, best for me. I'm going to show you in a lighter color as well. But because of these things that they don't blend very well together in most books, uh, one tip is to, I'm going to show you, instead of doing, if I was doing these leaves with the colored pencils, I probably would have shaded them uh, a darker here and then blended it out with a lighter. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> it, it. Maybe it was too too small space and too dark shades. Uh, but the thing is, I, what you can do is instead, when you have these pens, oh, they were very similar, at least for such small spaces. I take another one. Yeah, is to make one leaf in the dark color and some in the lighter one. So instead of having different shades on the same leaf, you have them on different leaves. So then at least something will happen. It will not look just flat. You have some color variation, but in a different way. One thing you also have to know when you use these kind of pens is that you will not, you, you can't be on the same spot too long because if I color too long here it will rub and destroy the paper, the water in this pen. So then it will bleed through. Now it didn't because this paper seems to be very thick. But I th think you understand my point. Now it started to bleed through on some other paper that would be much faster. So you have to keep moving quite fast over the space. And if you want to do a second layer, you have to let it dry between. Because what I have done, the mistake I've done a lot of times, is that I have panicked when I have seen a color or something that don't look good. And then I try to correct it immediately with another pen. Uh, and then the paper is rubbed because it will it is too much water on the same 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 space uh, at the same time so you need to make it dry before you add something darker or something else on top of it 
And if you want to try to blend these colors, because as I said, in some books you can, uh, one, one advice I have is to, is to, okay, let's see where to show this. Maybe here. No, maybe here, up here. Uh, instead of doing this, a very harsh line, and then try to blend. You see, nothing, nothing happens. It's still this harsh line, but instead doing more like this. So when you blend it together, even if it's not really blended together, it will look better because it's not this straight line. So it will more be like variations in the leaf or the flower. And uh, as I said, on some pages, I couldn't find one now. But on some pages in some books, it actually will work. The, the lighter color will blend it out a bit. If the paper is good enough, uh, you also can do like this if you want to try to blend them together. If you have a lighter and a darker pen, this is the Stabilo again. Uh, if you first do one layer with the lighter, then add some of the darker and then blend it out. It works be even better. Uh, but then it also risks to bleed through. But that can be one way of first adding some color that make the paper a bit wet so it's easier to blend them. The color doesn't dry as fast as when you're using it on top of just the paper. If you can see the difference. Oops. And well, another thing you can do with these pens, uh, they exist in different sizes. I've showed you my. Uh, and I actually find another one called Broadliner, which is something in between. I think it's 0 0.8 millimeter. This was a Stettler one. Uh, so if you have like Broadliner, fine liner, and bigger ones, you can use them on different uh, areas, depending on the size of the object you're coloring. But the fine liners are quite fun. You can add patterns after when it's dried. Uh, I don't know, but you can do dots with it. You know me, I like dots a lot. This was not maybe the best color, but you see my point. <laughs> you can go in and add stuff on top. Actually, I think on this page, the Bilu worked better at blending. So up here it was the Up here it was Stettler. Here it's uh, the Stabilu. They actually blended together better. So Uh, on this page, on this paper, actually I thought the I noticed that uh, Stabilo worked better with blending, at blending. And if you like to, you also can use these pens, all of them, even the fine liners, as watercolors. And I'm going to show you how. You're going to need some. Uh, metal thing or plastic thing something that is not poor something very slippery and you need a uh, water and a brush or as in my case a water brush and you're gonna use this as a palette so what you do is that you color on top of this met metal or plastic thing and you pick up the color with the brush and then you can use it 
as watercolors. So then you will get some gradients and you can shade when it is dried. You can go over it again with a darker color. Uh, and this will work even with the fine liners. <laughs> you add some color, you pick up the color and you are using it. And lastly, we can do it with a pit pen as well. What you also can try to do is to take two pens, a lighter and a darker, and actually I think this is darker, and put the darker on top of the lighter uh, and let the two tips meet for some seconds and then start where you want the darkest color and then it will be darker there and lighter when the dark color goes away from the tip so yeah that was my best tips uh, so you can have so much fun with uh, felty pens and fine liners. I hope I have inspired you. If you are new to this and don't know how to use them. And if you want me to do some special video for you, just let me know and then I will try to do it. So, goodbye!